Hi, I welcome you for this lecture on magnetic semiconductors and spintronics. This lecture will help you to understand the basics and some possible applications in this field. I have planned this lecture in the following way. I'll start this lecture with a brief discussion on magnetic semiconductors and its importance and then on spintronics which is an emerging field of research in recent times and finally a few applications in spintronics like joint magneto resistance and spin valves. Magnetic semiconductors. Magnetic semiconductors are the materials that would exhibit both ferromagnetic property and semiconductor property. If you see our traditional electronics, they are based on the control of charge carriers. In n-type semiconductors, the majority charge carriers are being electrons and in p-type semiconductors, the majority charge carriers being holes. Our traditional electronics is based on the control of electrons and holes in these materials. If implemented, magnetic semiconductors would provide an additional control over the charge carriers via their spin quantum state. An electron naturally has an intrinsic property like its charge, a mass, a spin. It has a value of half in Planck's unit and can have two spin states, an up state and a down state. You may wonder, can a magnetic property and a semiconductor property coexist? In actually, there exist materials where these two properties coexist. A good example of this kind could be a magnetite with a chemical formula Fe3O4. It's a ferrimagnetic material with a Curie temperature 858 Kelvin and also a semiconductor material with a band gap of 0.14 electron volt. It is most likely a semi-metal kind. Although magnetism and semiconductor properties coexist on some materials, scientists have predicted in order to have widespread application of magnetic semiconductors, the semiconductor properties must be similar to the well-developed semiconductors. And this can only be realized by a material called a dilute magnetic semiconductors. In short, this is often addressed as DMS. Dilute magnetic semiconductors. Dilute magnetic semiconductors or semiconductor materials which are doped with transition metals like iron, cobalt, nickel and so on. We choose transition metals for doping because these transition metals are good elemental ferromagnetic materials in nature. Through this doping of a semiconductor material with magnetic elements, we bring about the magnetic property in a semiconductor material. These dilute magnetic semiconductors find technological application due to the unique spintronic properties. I understand that we have not yet discussed on spintronics, but bear with me, we are quickly going to see it. Some examples of DMS materials on spintronic applications are like Zeteno based DMS are useful in fabricating spin transistors and spin polarized light emitting diodes. And here are some examples of dilute magnetic semiconductors. Now, let's discuss on spintronics. Spintronics, or otherwise a spin electronics, is a study of the role played by intrinsic spin of an electron in materials and other devices that exploit the spin properties. Conventional electronics ignore the spin property and rely mainly on the charge of the electron for its control. Adding the additional control component via spin, we can expect new effects, new capabilities, and new functionalities. We can also exploit the two possible orientation of spin states for storing information. If implemented, the spin devices may combine both logic and storage functionalities, which in turn eliminates the need for separate components. We can also think of doing quantum computing with spintronic devices. Computers use binaries that is 0 and 1 for computing. A similar binary can be realized with spin up and spin down states of electrons. The computer which performs computing using the spin up and spin down states as bits is known as quantum computers. 
as the bits used in this quantum computers are spin up and spin down quantum states these bits are called as quantum bits or in short qubits now let's see on some applications of spintronics one is the joint magneto resistance and the other is spin valve joint magneto resistance as you may aware any material will have a property called electrical resistance it is the resistance offered to the flow of charge carriers in a material magneto resistance is the change of electrical resistance with the application of magnetic field and the joint magneto resistance is a large change in electrical resistance of the material with the application of magnetic field joint magneto resistance is a quantum mechanical magneto resistance effect observed in multi layers composed of alternating ferromagnetic and non magnetic conductive layers a simple structure for observing joint magneto resistance is shown here in the picture the two blue colored layers on either side are ferromagnetic layers and the middle green color layer is a non magnetic layer the ferromagnetic layers are free to change its magnetization direction depending on the direction of the applied field there are two possible alignments of magnetization on the ferromagnetic layers one is the parallel alignment where the magnetization on both the ferromagnetic layers either face upwards or face downwards and the other possibility is anti parallel alignment where the magnetization on the ferromagnetic layers face in opposite directions depending on the parallel or anti parallel alignment of magnetization on the ferromagnetic layers the electrical resistance varies in the structure it is observed that for parallel alignment of magnetization the resistance offered by the structure is low and for the anti parallel alignment the resistance offered by the structure is high the change in magneto resistance between parallel and anti parallel alignment on some gms structures is close to 100% now let's try to understand the gmr effect the gmr effect is due to the spin dependent scattering of electrons in the structure the electrons in a material can be in a spin up or a spin down state in a solid there is 50 50 chance for electrons to be in spin up or spin down state when the electron move through a magnetized ferromagnetic material with a spin parallel to the magnetization of the layer the electron interacts strongly with the atomic magnetic moments and gets scattered more this results in high resistance similarly when the electrons move through the magnetized ferromagnetic solid with a spin anti parallel to the magnetization of the layer the electrons interact weakly with the atomic magnetic moments and gets scattered less this results in low resistance to sum up this idea the resistance of a magnetized ferromagnetic material is high for the electrons whose spin state is parallel to the magnetization vector of the ferromagnetic material and the resistance of the magnetized ferromagnetic material is low for the electrons whose spin state is anti parallel to the magnetization vector of the ferromagnetic material having learned about the spin dependent resistance of a ferromagnetic material we are now in a position to understand the gmr effect i believe these pictures are self explanatory i have just shown here the two possible alignments of magnetization in the gmr structure and the electrons path through the structure with spin up and spin down states in the picture the regions of strong scattering of electrons and high resistance is shown by zigzag lines and the regions of weak scattering and low resistance is shown by straight lines we can also draw an equivalent circuits for the gmr structure as shown here below the gmr structures the rectangular blocks in the circuit diagrams represent resistances a big and bulky block will represent high resistance in the circuit and small and thin block would represent low resistance on looking at the circuits it is obvious that the first gmr structure with parallel magnetization on the ferromagnetic layers offers the least resistance to the flow of electrons that's all about the gmr effect now let's discuss on the spin valve spin valve is a device that uses gmr effect it consists of many layers of conducting ferromagnetic materials 
whose resistance can change due to the relative alignment of magnetization in the ferromagnetic layers that is the GMR effect. The spin valve is as shown here in the diagram. Here the magnetization direction of the bottom ferromagnetic layer is fixed and the magnetization in the top ferromagnetic layer is free to undergo changes. The resistance of the structure changes whether the top ferromagnetic layer aligns parallel or anti-parallel to the bottom ferromagnetic layer's magnetization. When the top ferromagnetic layer's magnetization aligns parallel, the structure gives a low resistance state. And when it aligns anti-parallel, it is a high resistance state. Spin valves are mainly used as magnetic sensors and as reed heads in magnetic hard disk drives. With this, I end up my presentation on magnetic semiconductors and spintronics. For preparing this presentation, I have referred these books and websites. I hope these references would be beneficial to you to learn more on this topic. Thank you for your valuable time you spent on this. Bye-bye.